Good morning, everybody. My name is Jan Becker. I'm co-founder and CEO of Apex AI. We develop safe and secure software for autonomous systems. Vedadine was so kind to invite us here this morning to give a short presentation about what we do. So our goal is to enable safe and autonomous, secure systems for many companies. We work on an SDK, a software system for autonomous driving. For those of you who are familiar with ROS, or robot operating system, it's an automotive port of ROS2, so it's automotive grade ROS. On top of that, we develop building blocks for autonomy, also safe, secure, and certified. One of those is 3D perception, which works out of the box with Verdodyne LiDAR. I'm going to come to that in a bit. Just one slide on myself. I've worked on autonomous vehicles for a little over 20 years now in academia during my, during my PhD at Stanford University during the DARPA Urban Challenge. I'm faculty at Stanford since 2010. At uh, various nonprofits, Silicon Valley Robotics, um, the IEEE Society uh, for Intelligent Transportation Systems, and more recently, uh, we started a nonprofit, the Autoware Foundation, to develop open source around self driving. Uh, we are one of the founding members, so is Velodyne. And then professionally, uh, I've done that for over 20 years. At Bosch in Germany, developing a traffic jam assist, a left turn assist, uh, working on robotics with Ross. Uh, at Bosch here in Palo Alto, also with, with the Velodyne uh, on the BMW, then on the Tesla vehicle, at Faraday Future, and then more recently at uh, Apex AI. You take a look here on the left, that's a very simplified stack for autonomous driving. You have a vehicle, you have sensors on the vehicle, for instance Velodyne LiDAR, you have compute, you need to get the, send the data from the sensor to the computer, compute, and then back to the actuator. And then the software on top consists typically of maps, simulation, that's off-board, and then in the vehicle you have an operating system, so real-time kernel, you have a framework software, you have autonomy algorithms for instance, perception, localization, and planning on top, and that all combined uh, gets you some kind of user application. So get me from A to B or deliver a package or things like this. Vehicles could be anything like a passenger vehicle, sensors would be LiDAR, cameras, radar. Compute is your ECU in the vehicle, typically consisting of an x86 and or ARM and or GPU and FPGA processing. Then you use map simulation. Operating system is typically Linux or QNX. ROS is Almost everybody uses ROS for research. We provide the automotive grade version of ROS, Apex OS. Our algorithms are your computer vision, machine learning, localization algorithms. Those are in the Apex Autonomy stack. And if you compare that to an iPhone stack, your hardware down here, that's the phone. Operating system is iOS. What compares to what we provide is the iOS SDK that enables you to then put applications on top. Historically, everybody uses ROS, the so robot operating system as framework software. That started in 2008, so over 10 years ago. More recently, almost exactly a year ago, January 2018, the second major release came out, ROS2. And we at Apex AI, we use ROS2 to fork, make it automotive grade, and what that means I'll come to in a second, and derive Apex OS from it. Why do you actually need a framework? Why do you need Apex OS? Why do you need ROS? Framework helps you to abstract away any sensor, actuation, and interfaces. So you don't want to deal with different, different sensors. You want one interface to your sensor system. You want one interface to the actuation system. If you change the vehicle underneath, you don't want to change your interface. So you want the framework to abstract that for you. Same for the operating system. If at some point you start with Linux, later on you move on to, to QNX, you don't want to change all your software. You just want to have a switch and then turn from Linux to QNX. And that's what ROS and Apex OS provide. The framework makes implementing autonomy algorithms, implementing auto robotics algorithms much easier. On the message level, it provides discovery of nodes. So who do you communicate with in the software stack? How do you create messages? That's one line opposed to uh, a, a long function. How do you map names, namespaces? How do you set your quality of service? What is important? 
communicate versus what is less safety critical. And most importantly, it provides separation of concerns. You want in your software, your communication software, your coordination software, your configuration, and your computation clearly separate. And the framework enables you to do that in a simple way, even though you are, you are maybe not a robotics expert. A framework enables you to clearly separate them. That also means you can swap out components later on much, much, much easier. And it, achieves you, it helps you to achieve a safe and secure and robust system. And this is done in ROS, and we do that in Apex OS as well. So now what's the difference between ROS and Apex OS? Apex OS is automotive grade, ROS is not. ROS is an R&D system. Apex OS, on top of ROS, provides static memory. Static memory is then one of the components that you need to have a hard real-time system. If you want your function to execute in a certain amount of time, which you need if you have a vehicle driving 65 miles per hour on a highway, you need to have that in real time. And, and static memory is one of the components I come to that later on that is required so that you can start and allocate software uh, memory on the fly. Occasionally, if you do that, like on your iPhone or on your, on your Mac, on my MacBook, the software stalls for a few milliseconds or even a few seconds on the MacBook, that's a bouncing ball. But on a car, you can have a bouncing ball that uh, have, has you wait for, for several seconds. We implement callbacks. We implement complete security on the message level and on the algorithmic level. And we do that for you. We do that for you as a user. Uh, we, do, we go through testing and we go through automotive grade functional safety certification. I'll come to that later on. What does hard real-time mean? Hard real-time means every time you run a certain function, it runs exactly the same. It doesn't take 100 milliseconds once and then one second the second time. In order to do that, we need to be conscious how we work with memory, with threads, and with blocking calls. Blocking calls would be, you start to write your data to a hard drive. Depending on how fast your hard drive is, that takes longer or less long. We abstract all of that away. So we bridge the gap to hard real time by actually having no resource allocation during runtime. You start up your system, all the resources get allocated, and then you never touch them again which also means you never need to allocate or deallocate memory again. It's already allocated, you just write to it. We have actually, because even in the standard libraries, that's not the case, we had to allocate, uh, we, had, we had to implement, design and implement our own string function. So we replace STL string by Apex string. Same for vector, same for exceptions. All those are not real time, all those are not safe to use in an autonomous vehicle, Apex functions are. Real time logging. Ideally, you have a couple of velo lines on your vehicle, you want to record a lot of data. You want to play, play it back exactly the same the way it happened on the vehicle. Current lockers don't enable you to do that. They record all the memories, but they don't record them with exactly the same timing in which they were generated on the vehicle. We've implemented a real-time locker, which again, based on our real-time functions, does that in real-time and does that with the exact timing in which those messages were generated by the sensors. Weight sets. The standard concept for message communication in ROS and in most other middlewares are callbacks. Callbacks are not real-time, callbacks are not safe. We implemented weight sets to make that deterministic and to enable, deter enable deterministic ex execution. We've implemented what we call large data support, which um, puts the data in memory, then just passes a pointer to the other process. Other process reads from memory super fast. We can do that in real time. Managed system that relates to functional safety and how you, how you deal with failures. Today, in a robotic system today, in R&D, you just start up all your processes, you wait a few seconds, you hope everything's up and then you go. That's not obviously not safe. You don't know if all the processes have started. We have put, we have developed ROS Launch 2, it's actually an open source. And we now have a finite state machine around every process, which means we are we know exactly what the state of each process is. Is it still initializing? Has it started? Is it running? Has it failed? So we know once all the processes have started. We also know once the process at runtime has failed, so we can restart it again. 
We can also launch multiple processes on the same processor or on different ECUs, and then either have them run in parallel or, start, or have one take over once one has failed. That overall is part of our concept for functional safety. Security. Can't have enough security. So what we've implemented is message encryption. You have a driver in a shuttle, here there's the one next to you. You really don't have control anymore whether there's one somebody in the vehicle trying to find an Ethernet cable, plug in a device, and then spoof that other messages at some point. So what we do is, from the sensor, we encrypt messages. Sensor needs a hardware security module for that. We encrypt messages. Messages are encrypted and then authenticated, so we actually know it's a Velodyne sending data and not some device spoofing Velodyne data when we receive the data. And then on the process level, we implement access control, meaning only whitelisted processes that we allow to run can actually run on an ECU. So even though somebody hypothetically has hacked an ECU, we still limit what that uh, hacker can then actually execute. Every customer system for every hardware system, we have a let's lab setup, so we don't need to go out on the road every time. We have a let's lab setup that replicates the hardware that runs on a vehicle. Here's the setup with two Velodyne DLP 16 Pyrus. And before I actually do that, we, we test in the cloud. We have various cloud instances for all the different ARM, Intel, ECUs uh, that we test. And we follow, we strictly follow ISO 26262 and we certify then up to ACD. That was the Apex OS part. Now coming to the Apex Autonomy part. Apex Autonomy is a set of building blocks for autonomy that you can use in your system. You can use some of them, you don't have to use all of them. We've currently implemented LiDAR perception, LiDAR prediction. We are currently working on LiDAR classification. And in, from then on, in the next quarter, we'll have LiDAR mapping, LiDAR localization. Later on, we'll tackle the planning part. Here you see a pipeline, two Velodyne VLP16s, getting into the Apex AI system drivers, then we do ground sampling segmentation, so where is ground versus where are objects. Then we fuse the data, from this case from two Velodyne VLP16s. We downsample it to something we can actually handle, then we cluster it into objects, and then we form a hull, so in this case a bounding box. Here, around square building, that actually works fine. Here, you see some tree formation, here you see a car driving by. Really for trees and for, for bushes, it's actually hard to find the right time. You can see that there. Just as Apex OS, Apex Economy algorithms are real time, reliable. We've optimized them for reliable performance, not for peak performance, for reliable performance. So they execute exactly with the same performance every time. And we are in the process of certifying them again uh, to ISO 26262 as a safety element out of context up to ACD. Apex Autonomy is actually implemented the exact same way as Apex OS. We have static memory, we do all the things you need to do for safe software, explicit conversions, there are no blocking calls, all the Apex OS opposed to standard library system calls are used. There's uh, static memory allocation, and we follow all the design principles that enable safe software. Here we actually did a case study. We took the open source ROS driver, ROS1 driver for Velodyne, which is great and works out of the box for research. And we made that automotive great, so that you can use it instead of on a research vehicle and a production vehicle. Well, so what did we change? Again, we made all the memory allocation at startup, so there is no memory allocation anymore at runtime. All the threads run on Apex OS threads, so they are completely controllable with respect to size, priority, and so on. There are no operating system specific calls anymore, so whether you swap out, start with Linux, then later on move to QNX, driver doesn't change anymore. Just uh, you have a switch and then you switch to QNX. There's a clear failure handling. If input failure, if there an input failure occurs, we handle that on the driver side. There's a point cloud discretization. We can real-time lock the Velodyne data with 
with the Apex OS driver, and it's completely tested on the unit integration and stress test level. And that's actually available as we speak. We've then benchmarked performance of a non-real-time ROS system, again using two relevant VLP16s, versus our Apex AI real-time system. So we run two VLP16s through a, a high-grade network switch, and we run it on on a NVIDIA Drive PX2, which has two SOCs, exactly identical compute systems. One runs a non-real-time Linux ROS1 relevant driver system. The other one runs a real-time, our real-time kernel, Apex OS, and then our, our relevant driver. Then we record all the data, and then we compare the output. What you see on the left is performance of a non-real-time system. What you see on the right is performance of a, an Apex AI system. The blue line shows you latency. So how long does it take from sending to receiving? The red line shows you frequency of execution, so the compute rate. We are asking it to compute every 100 milliseconds. On the Apex AI system level, it does. Under no stress, it also does over here, but then we stress the system. We run, we run other tasks. There's a CPU stress command we execute. So we simulate a lot of compute load on the ECU. Here, still executes as we are asking it, because all the resources are already locked in. We are using resources that we've already locked. Here, in a non-real-time system, no resources are locked. So occasionally stuff gets executed, then somebody else blocks the memory, all the, all the file I.O., and then it takes longer. So the latency goes up, and then it takes much, much longer to execute. Maybe it only executes every 200, 300, or 400 milliseconds. And then, all of a sudden, two cycles get executed at the same time. So, um, cycle rate actually goes down to almost zero because you have one execution and then the next one right over. So that's the typical performance we see under stress of our system versus a non-real-time ROS system, which you should really use only for R&D and not in a production vehicle. We do that not only in the lab, we also do that on cars. We have, we have a demonstration vehicle, we also have a permitted test on roads in California. And then we drive around, that's our vehicle here, our office is here on the right. We drive on public roads, currently on this vehicle with, again, two Velodynes on top. So to conclude, the Apex AI, we develop Apex S, automotive-grade version of ROS2. We provide hard real-time, we provide safety, security, ISO 26262, functional certification, and it's available for early access for pilot customers actually right now. We've hit the two, couple of customers. On top of that, we provide Apex Autonomy. Apex Autonomy are building blocks for autonomy algorithms. We have LiDAR perception, we have LiDAR classification, we are working on LiDAR localization and mapping, and on top of that, we'll do planning and control later this year.